Yeah, we can hear you. Right, thanks. All right. Um, welcome, and we'll start right now. As usual, make sure you have two blocks or something similar, like two water bottles or a textbook nearby for support. And a blanket will be really handy, especially for sensitive needs. For today's class, we might do some binding, but um, since we've been practicing with um, action without attachment to the fruits, so it's not necessary you have to have a strap nearby for to create binding. Um, but if you really want to, please go ahead to find a, um, a old scarf or belt, something like that. Um, and I'll provide variation along the way too. So once you get up your props, bring your um, blocks to the front of the mat, but bring one of them with you, especially when you're in a child pose. If your hips are really far away from your heels, you can bring a block in between the heels and just rest, rest the sit bones on the blocks. And then extend the arms out, come into a balasana child pose. And your hands are close to another block. If you find yourself having you know, claustrophobia or simply don't like the fact that your face is against the ground, you can rest your forehead on the second block. And just breathe in and slowly let everything out. Feel your hands walking far away from you. And on an exhale, let your sit bones getting close to the soles of the feet. And start softening your gaze or eventually close eyes. If this starting posture does not help you to get closer to your breathing, you can come into a more familiar shape like cross leg seating or even lie down on your back. And shift, we all shift our focus to the pace of your breathing. Let the sound of your breathing be heavy, be audible. And get comfortable in this posture that's super close to the ground. And noticing if there's any rush to move, to flow. There's nothing wrong with that rush to flow fast because we've always been educated to behave that way. But today, just to assure yourself, there'll be time of moving But before that, let's just to get prepared by like getting closer to our breathing so we can rest our mind against it.
getting the start, create or dry breath quality. With the air brushing the back of your throat. In some way, let it out. Option to stay in the center. Option to walk both arms to the left side. Let the right side waist grow. Breathe in all the way through the right fingertips. And keep your right sit bone close to your right heel. And slowly walk yourself back to center. We'll do the other side. Walk your hands to the right side. Shift your focus arm to the left of fingertips and the left sit bone. Keep it attached to the left, the sit, uh, left uh, heel. The stretch is so intense, it feels like your left arm is almost growing out of your body. And now on the next exhale, walk your hands back to center and start walk your hands forward until your sit bones right above your knees and press your chest against the ground into a happy puppy pose. Keep your chest close to the ground, but also lift it. And continue to feel your hand walk away from you. You're still growing away from your hips. Imagine your whole lower body is a root and your hands are growing up towards the sky. And if you want to add some Chest opening, you can even come tend your fingertips and come up onto the, um, the tip of your fingers. And start walk the hands back towards you and press your hips, close the heels again, come into child pose and we'll feel like that. Walk your hands forward and glide your chest forward Lift your chest up into a Bhujangasana, baby cobra. Around your upper, upper back and press your hips back into a child. The flow like that, inhale, round your upper back, chin chest, pull your chest forward into a baby cobra. Exhale, round your back and press back into a child. Continue on your own. Make sure you're tearing your movement according to the breath, the breath instead of the other way around. Bring up those low backs. And next time when you arrive in neutral, come in to a table. You can continue into cow and cat if you feel that baby cobra and child pose is not enough for you to warm up and open the chest. When you're ready, raise up your right arm and thread your right hand in between your left arm and your torso and rest your right face into the ground. Walk the left hand toward the front. Open the upper back. Tend up your left fingertips. Tuck your left outer hip in so it's not collapsing to the left side. You can keep your left hand where it is for better support. If you want more chest opening, you can raise up your left arm. You can even glide your left hand onto your back or even slide into your right hip crease. 
an option to stay here. If you want to challenge him more, you can extend your left leg long. And release everything back to center and walk your left hand close to the face and raise up your right arm. Thread the right arm underneath your left. We'll do it one more time. Inhale, raise up your right arm. Exhale, thread the right underneath the left. And we'll do the other side. Left arm up. And exhale, thread the left arm underneath the right. Walk the right hand to the front, extend your right arm. Option to stay here. Right outer hip in first, even if you want to move into the next option. An option to raise up your right arm. And as a reminder to open your right shoulder, you can bend your right arm, bring the right hand onto your back or slide it into the left hip crease. And the last option is extend your right leg long. Remember last class we talked about the first is your limbs away from the center. It's the connection you have, that means you have to put into more efforts to keep it back, that connection. And bring your right hand back to center. Walk it all the way back to the face. Raise up your left arm. Spread the left arm underneath the right. Inhale, raise up the left. And exhale, thread it under. And come back to neutral. Walk your hands one hand print forward and tuck your toes and press your tailbones up into our first down dog today. Take your time to bend into one leg or another. And also rock into a high plank, then press back into a downward facing dog. And if you find a downward facing dog is a place that you can already be close to your breath, stay there. We're all fine neutral in our downward facing dog. And lift your left leg up. Bend your left hip. And stack your left hip over your right. Bend your left knee. Press into your left hand so you're not collapsing the right side. And the chest is still re relevantly even towards the ground. And draw some big circles with the left knee. If you're doing so, switch direction. So draw the left knee to the right elbow. Take the left leg back, stack the left tip over the right. And exhale, left knee, right elbow. Last time like that. And shift the left knee to the left elbow. And step the left foot outside of the left hand, release your right knee down. Take your time to spread a blanket across the mat if you need it. We establish in this classic low lunge first, your hands can be on the ground. You can rest your hands on the top of the thigh bones and also raise up the arms. Move your right knee behind your right thigh bone, so you're opening the right front hip. Now switch sides, stay where you are, and now switch sides so you can see me better. And from there, right leg, right shin in, so walk your chest to the right side, so you're kind of in a supported warrior too and rise up, open your arms into a T. So your left knee is bent, left knee is over your left heel, and your right hip is right above your right knee. Open the chest. Gaze on the left fingertips. 
even though your gaze is not on the right fingertips, but imagining it is on the same level as the left. This is where you can grab a block. Rest your right hand on the block on the ground and extend your left arm by the left of you. And come all the way up. And bring your left hand inside of the left of foot. Right arm up, support your side angle. Come all the way up and just support it warrior to a flow like that. Exhale, release your right hand on the ground, left arm by the left ear. Rise up. Exhale, left hand inside the left foot, right arm by the right ear, hugging the left arm into the left thigh. Inhale, rise back up. Exhale, reverse. One more time like that. And next time when your right hand to the ground, left arm by the left ear, extend your left leg long and to support the side plank. Option to stay there, option to float it up into the height of the hip. Option to bring the left arm behind you. Find a just a uh, steady point on the ground for you to focus on. And release your left foot. And walk yourself into your left leg. Just bring your right leg back to center. And come up onto the pinky edge of the left foot. Use your left hand, gently press your left knee open and twist your chest up. This is one of the most familiar posture if you've been to my classes before. So we're using the press of the left hand, gently inviting some space in our left hip socket. While continue to make space in our right front hip. and come back to center and step your left foot to meet with the right into a high plank. We'll stay here for one long breath. You can release the knees down if you have sensitive wrist. And exhale, bend through the elbows, hug the elbows towards the chest and release all the way down to the belly. Just arms. Inhale, lift the chest up. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and exhale, release it down. Twice more like that. And next time when your chest is open, option to lift the top of the feet up. And release everything down. Bring the hands by the chest and press yourself back up into a table. And press all the way. We'll come back into a child pose, Balasana. Use this time as an opportunity to regain your momentum for growing, for moving. Once you're ready, We we'll all come into downward facing dog. In downward facing dog, lift up your right leg, bend your right knee, stack your right hip over the left, press into your right hand, and draw some big circles with that right knee. Next time, your right knee pointing toward the sky. On the exhale, draw the right knee into the left elbow, twisting it to the left side. Inhale, take the right leg up. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. One more time like that. And shift your right knee to the right elbow. 
Step your right foot and outside of the right hand and release your left knee down. Stay in the slow lunge under your nasana first. Move your back knee behind your back thigh bone. Hands on the ground or bring it up onto the right thigh bones. An option to move the hands up. You can bring your hands further away from your core center. It requires much more effort from you to keep that connection. Find some relationship between your thigh bones and your core set first before we start moving again. Which might require a steady point for you to focus on so you don't get easily distracted. Once you start ready to be flowing again, turn your left shin bone in and shift your right knee above your right heel. Left knee right underneath your left hip joint. Rise up into a supportive warrior too. Press your right knee towards the right pinky finger. Gaze over the right fingertips. Even though both hands are going off the direction, still feel the both sides of the waist and growing up towards the sky. Release your left hand onto the bag, on the ground or on a block. Bring the right arm by the right ear. And now press into the left hand, support yourself all the way up, back up into a supported warrior two. And exhale, lower your right hand inside of your right foot. Left arm up. Press your right knee into the right up, up arm bone and the other way around as well. Option to extend the left arm by the left here. And now press into the right hand and use the momentum coming back from the ground to support yourself back up. Next, so release your left hand down, right arm by the right ear. We'll flow like that. Inhale up. Next, so release. Next time when you're back into reverse, kick your right leg straight right arm by the right ear into supported side plank. Option to bring the right hand behind you as a reminder for you to open the right chest. Option to float up your right foot. Press into the right heel. Standing strong evenly into the left palm and the left shin. And release your right foot down and walk yourself to the left side and all the way to the back, to the front of the mat. And come up onto the pinky edge, edge of the right foot. And use your right hand, gently press the right knee open and revolve your chest up. An option to raise up your right arm and bring all the way to the back. And how length into the spine. And exhale, revolve your ribcage open to the sky. And make sure your left shoulder is not up toward the left ear by pressing firmly into the left hand. And release back to center. Tuck your back toes and step your right foot back to meet with the left. Come into a high plank. Option to really knees, knees down if you need it. You know it's always there. Next, so bend through the elbows. Release all the way down to our belly. Cactus arms again. 
And this time we'll float both elbows and the top of the feet up. Lift everything up. Exhale, swing your arms to the back. Your palms may or may not touch. Cactus your arms again. And exhale, swing your arms back. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Bring your hands back to front. Last time. And exhale, release your hands back to the front. And release the hands by the chest. Tuck the elbows in. in. Inhale, lift the chest up, Bhujangasana. Option to straighten both arms. Lift your pelvis off on the ground into Ardha Mukha Shranasana, upward facing dog. Next, you'll tuck the toes, press your tailbones up, downward facing dog. And we'll release the knees down, press your hips toward the heels into a child. You can stay here as long as you want. If you feel like you have a lot of energy to burn out, come into a downward facing dog. You can do a lot of step by step. You can also hop forward. And we'll all meet at the front of the mat to prepare our today's sun salute. If you're in still resting in child pose, you can choose to stay there. You can also just, just come stand up and walk to the front of the mat. Once you arrive at the front of the mat, we move to Surya Namaskar A today, and I'll walk you through the first two rounds before I send you to flow on your own. And how, raise up the arms. Exhale, fold over the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back, auto Uttanasana. And exhale, step left and right into a high plank. Take a long inhale. Next, so bend through the elbows. You can release all the way down to the ground. You can also halfway Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, pull the chest forward into Bhujangasana or upper facing dog. And exhale, press your tailbones up into downward facing dog. If none of those works for you, you can just stay on all of your falls and move in between cow and cat. We'll be here for three to five rounds of breath. Evenly press into the palms of the finger pads. Keep a lot of bend in your legs first so you can bring your chest close to the thigh bones. Then start releasing the heels toward the ground and lift your tailbones up. Stay close to your breath. If you lost that connection, step it down a notch. We're growing toward the direction we want to be. And the connection with our breath is almost like the root. If the root is broken, we're not growing toward that anyway. On the next exhale, step by step, a hop forward. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, fold over the legs. Raise all the way up. And exhale, hands to our heart center by the side to dasana. Inhale, arms up. Urdhva And exhale, fold over the legs. Uttanasana. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. So step right and left into a high plank. Knees up or down. Take a long inhale. And exhale, bend through the elbows, come into a back bend of your choice. Can be Bhujangasana, upward facing dog, or cow pose. And exhale, we all meet in downward facing dog. And if you practice with me last year around this time, you might notice this is the same topic. It's about growth. not just the breaking out of the heaviness that brought by this kapha season, the mix of earth and water, but also 
grows on our mind practice. On the next uh, exhale, step by step, hop forward. Inhale, lengthen to the spine. Exhale, fold the legs. Rise all the way up. And the hand through heart center by the side. Float two more rounds on your own so you have that space to explore, to break out that darkness and the heaviness above your head. Just like imagine a sea that breaking out the soil, reaching for the sunlight. Now be quiet. If you're still flowing, take your time. We'll all meet at the front of the mat. If you already arrived at the front of the mat, come into an intentional Tadasana. Hands at the prayer in front of the heart or by the side and standing strong through both legs, pull the knees towards the pelvis. Just feel really connected to the center of you. And while you're waiting for other practitioners to arrive at the front of the mat, use this opportunity to reflect on your growth on um, your yoga mat compared to last year this time. Are you still looking, constantly looking for stimulation for fancy postures? Are you still having trouble and difficulty of sitting down quietly by yourself? And those are all things that are hard to measure, only you yourself know how much you have integrated your yoga practice. into your life. And once you're ready to stop flowing again, we'll take half of a salute or step by step to the back into a downward facing dog. So even for our second flow tonight, it's gonna to be most of the shape that you're really familiar with. Which is gonna give us an opportunity to see if our relationship with them has shifted with our persistent practice through the year. Lift up your right leg. Stack your, your right hip over the left. Bend your right knee and press into your right hand firmly. 
right foot in between the hands, spin down your left heel, the right hand inside the right leg, raise up your left hand into a side angle. Hug your right knee into the left arm, right arm, left arm, left hand sticking all the way to the sky. And press into your right hand and use the momentum coming back from the ground and right all the way up into a warrior two. Bend deeply into the right foot, right knee. Point your right knee towards the right pinky fingertip. Gaze over your right fingertips. And just let both hands go in towards opposite directions. Flip your right palm, reverse your warrior. Extend through the right arm. Right leg bend for now, then start slowly, gradually straightening your right leg. Come back to center, keep both legs straight. You can shimmy your left foot slightly in and reach your right hand forward until you reach that sticky point. And your right hand slowly, slowly with control, lower it down onto the right shin, right ankle, or right on the ground. If you have a block, you can bring the block underneath your right hand. As long as you're not compressing this right side waist here. Chikanasana triangle pose. Option to flip your left palm and bring it to your back and slide it all the way into your right hip crease. Bend into the right leg, we come back into a side angle. With or without that half bind you created. You might your right leg might lose a little bit of connection with the ground in the high, in that um, triangle pose. So standing strong again to the right leg, tuck your right outer hip in. If you have a block, you can grab the block and walk your right hand with or without the block really far away from you to the front. And standing strong on the right foot and drag your left foot and slowly lift your left leg up into an outer Trinjanasana, half moon. Standing on that right leg itself is already very really difficult. And if you like to change your balance, you can raise up your left arm. Remember, the further it away from you, the weaker the connection it is, then the more efforts you have to put in to stay connected. And just like most of trees, to grow tall and strong, they have to grow a strong and thick stump first. So stay strong on the right leg and press the left foot back. And release your left foot down to meet with the right and fold over the legs. You can come into a Malasana yoga squat. You can come into a high chair pose, whatever that can release most of the tension from your right, the back of the right leg. And you can stay there. Option two, come into a high squat. Bring the hand on top of the thighs. Release the shoulders away from the ears first. Our demo first, Uddiyana Bandha, uh, Uddiyana Bandha first, um, fire lock. Um, so we take a deep breath in. And actually let everything out. So inside of us, right now, it's like a vacuum. And you pull the navel towards the rib cage, pull the chest forward. 
and how to take a deep breath in. And exhale, fold over the legs, and we'll do it together. If you're expecting a light coming on your abdominal pain, skip it. Stay in your um, shape of squatting. And just continue with your Ujjayi breath. But if you want to try it with the Bandha, come into a high squat, palms on the top of thighs. Take a long breath in. And exhale, let everything out. Every last a little bit. And pull the navel towards the ribcage and pull the chest forward. Ah, release. We'll come back here on the other side. So it's okay if you just feel like you didn't quite get the gist of it in this round. And we'll step back into a downward facing dog and move to one vinyasa. Lift your left leg up. Bend your left knee. Step your left hip over the right and press firmly into the left hand. And draw the left knee into the chest and step the left foot in between the hands. Spin down your right heel. And bring the left hand inside of the left foot. Hugging the left knee into the left arm bone and raise up your right arm. Side angle. And press firmly into the left hand and use a resistance between the palm and the ground and come all the way up into a warrior two. Bend deeply into the left leg. Gaze on the left fingertips. Stay steady in this warrior two first before we move. And flip your left palm and reverse warrior. Right hand on the right leg, left palm by the left ear. Let the left side body grow. And gradually straighten the left leg. Reverse triangle. Come all the way up. We'll shift into a triangle. Shimmy your right foot slightly forward. And reach your left hand forward into a sticky point that you cannot go further anymore. Release your left hand onto the left shin, left ankle on the ground, right hand up, Shikonasana triangle pose. Hug your left outer hip in. And over the right hand. An option to bring the right hand onto your back or into your left hip crease. And we'll bend into our left leg, come closer to the ground into a side angle. Re-establish between your left sole and the ground first. Hug your left outer hip in again. Bring your left hand with or without block really far away from you to the front. So slowly lift your right leg up into a half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. Find a steady point on the ground to focus on. If you have your right arm folded behind you, you can, depends. If you want to keep your right chest open, you can keep it bent. You can also raise up your right arm to change your balancing on your left leg. Flex your right foot. Imagine there's a wall behind you for you to step the right foot on. Then step your right foot down into a yoga squat or into a high chair pose. You can stay where you are squatting you can also come into a high chair and bring the hands on top of the thighs. We'll try with Yana Bata again. Take a deep, long inhale. 
Now exhale, let everything out. It's so empty, you pull your chest forward, your navel will naturally rise up to the ribcage. And we're all meeting down with face dog. In downward facing dog, you can come here, bring your knees down to the ground, come into a child pose, just to give yourself a chance to catch your breath. Remember, you have to grow strong, healthy roots first before you reach up. And that connection with your breath is your root. Now lift your right leg up and draw the right knee into the left elbow. The right leg out into a fallen triangle. Lift your pelvis up, lift your left arm up. Next, so release your left hand down, draw the right knee into the chest and step the right foot in between the hands. Spin down your left heel. Right hand inside the right foot, left arm up. Option to stay here, option to create a half bind. And behind your snake, get your left hand into the space between your right rib cage and your right thigh for a half bind. Option to thread your right arm underneath your right knee and walk your hands towards each other. The bind may or may not happen. You can also use a strap or scarf or something similar to help you to trip the bind if you really want to go for the, the bind. We're all starting with releasing our right hand onto the ground first. And press that right hand into the ground and use the resistance to help us rise all the way up into a warrior two. Gaze over the right fingertips and reverse. And straighten the right leg all the way up. Turn your left foot slightly in. And reach your right hand forward and lower down to Trikonasana. Tuck your right outer hip in. We're gonna do some funky things, so stay stable on the right foot first. Bend into the right leg, into the side angle. So from side angle, we have a couple of directions we can grow and do. And this perfect fine if you want to stay in the side angle. So you watch me demo first. You can create that full bind or half bind first. You can straighten the right leg into a bounded triangle pose. Another option you have is stay strong on the right leg, lift your left leg up and straighten your right leg into a bounded half moon. Either way, we're all going to meet in a yoga squat. Elbows inside of side bones and pressing them into each other. And from here, of course, if you want to try Uriana Banda again, please go for it. And if you like to try low pose, which is actually pretty good to here to release the 
taxing they've been doing on our the back of our right leg. And your body is actually pretty warmed up for hand um, for arm balance. And it's perfectly fine if you just want to stay in this yoga squat and to catch up with your breath again. I'm going to step into a high plank and then come all the way. Meet me in downward facing dog and we'll do finish the other round. Lift up your left leg, stack your left hip over the right and press into the left hand. And draw the left knee into the right elbow and kick the left foot out. Step your right arm into a fallen triangle. Press the pelvis up first. Next, I'll release your right hand down and step your right foot in between the hands and spin down your right heel. Bring the left hand inside of the left foot first and hugging the left knee and the left shoulder and right arm up. Make the right hand into the space between your left thigh and your left waist. You can stay in this half bind. The option to thread the left arm underneath the left knee. Bring the left hand behind you. Your hands may or may not touch. And roll your chest up, up. Inhale, stretching all the way into the pinky edge of the right foot and standing strong to the left foot. Next, so revolve your chest up toward the sky. With or without the bend, we all meet with our left hand on the ground first. All the way up into a warrior two. Reverse way. Straight in the left leg. Rise all the way back up. Shimmy your right foot slightly in. Reach your left hand forward. Release the left hand down into the ground on the left shin. Triangle pose. Bring the right hand behind you or into the left hip crease for the, for the half bind. We all get closer to the ground by bending into the left leg. Into side angle again. And from here, you remember the options. Option to create a full bind and stay there. Option to create a full bind or half bind. Where you're going is not limited by the kind of bind you have. And straighten your left leg into a bounded triangle. Another option is straighten your left and um, bend into the left leg first, then slowly lift your right leg up and straighten your left into a bounded half moon. Which I would have to take, I'll eventually come into Malasana Yoga Squad. And as I mentioned before, this is a perfect place to try Uriana Banda again. And if it's crow pose is in your practice, please go for it. And because this is not the focus of today's class, I'm not gonna cue you through a crow pose. Even just the Skandasana is a super helpful tool today to release the tension from the back of your legs. I mean, one of the growth from your yoga practice is you know what tools you have on the mat and when to use what tool. So when I'm not queuing, 
test it out. And we'll all meet in Dawn of the Zen Dog. Bring the blanket or a couch pillow close to you first in Dawn of the Dog. Then lift up your right leg. And bring the right knee behind your right wrist, left right foot behind the left wrist. And extend your left leg long. If you have the blanket, bring the blanket underneath your right hip first. Come into a half pigeon pose. So get comfortable in this. Actually, get comfortable is not a good word because somebody is not never gonna get comfortable in a half pigeon pose. But if you are in a half pigeon, get steady first in this half pigeon. If top pigeon does not work for you, you can come down onto your back and cross your right ankle over the left knee. And that is enough for right outer hip stretch. We can also bring the left knee and the right leg closer to your chest to intensify it a little bit even more. And if you're in half pigeon pose, come down onto the chest and stack your hands on top of each other and rest your forehead on top of it. Three to five rounds of breath here. Stretch the right outer hip that has been hugging in. If figure four on the back or half pigeon does not work for you, you still want some outer hip stretch and come into a cross leg seat. Come into a Baddha Konasana, bring the soles of the feet together and press your elbows into the thigh bones and fold over to the front. And usually, shapes I'm queuing. It does not work for you, but your body might still be able to guide you to certain stretch or certain strengthening. Your body is constantly seeking for balance. Trust it. And whenever you're ready, start slowly rise up. If you're on your back in figure four, you can stay there. You can also just uh, twist to one side. If you're in a half pigeon, pull your left heel close to you and grab the left ankle with the left hand. And continue to open the chest. option to stay here, option to bring that left foot inside of the left elbow. And because of all the bind, your shoulders might have the ability to hook your hands together into a mermaid pose. And release from it. And step your right foot back and step your left foot forward. We'll open, we open the front of the right front, right hip by coming into a low lunge. And of course, you can also come into, I know a lot of yoga teachers out there might cue you to, to go through some wild thing, which is also really good front hip opening, but depend on the sensitivity of your wrist. Sometimes less is more. A low lunge is a much safer way of reopening the front of the hip.
I'm gonna do the other side. Come back into a downward facing dog. And bring the left knee behind the left wrist. Lower your right knee down. Move the blanket to be underneath your left hip. If you're on your back in a uh, figure four, switch side, left ankle over the right knee. If you're in a Sukhasana, switch the other leg to the front. And if you're in half pigeon, lower down to the elbows. Then stack the hands on top of each other. Switch the stack if you remember which hand was on top in last round. And then bring the forehead on top of the hands. Three to five rounds of breath here. And start inviting your Ujjayi breath back in to you if you lost that connection somewhere, especially in the last couple of challenging postures. You might sacrifice your breathing for the posture. If you're in the half pigeon, you can start get yourself up onto the hands. An option to pull your right foot in and grab the right ankle with the right hand. Get some nice right front quad stretch. Option to extend the left arm forward. Option to bend your right elbow and hook the right foot inside of the right elbow. An option to bend your left elbow and bring your hands together into a mermaid pose. And release carefully. And step your left foot back. Right foot forward. And release your left knee down into a low lunge. Notice that if you're more capable of observing your thoughts coming and go instead of following them or fight against them. Noticing if you're more capable of in sync with your breath, which is slowing down. And how can you integrate that kind of capability with everything else in your life without going through all those physical postures? And just for the sake of being balancing on both sides, that back into a downward facing dog. We'll flip around onto our back into, before we move into a bridge pose, bring the blocks close to you first. We're gonna need them. And bring the feet as wide as the mat and knock the knees together. 
this is where you can settle your sh- practice night. You know, so windshield wiper your knee side to side for some continuous outer hip stretch. Once you're ready for Sarvanga Sarvangasana, bridge pose, parallel your feet and bring your feet close to the hips. Then, because we've been doing so much hip opening, so just to counterpose that, bring a block if you have one between, bring it between the thigh bones and the knee, just to neutralize our thigh bones a little bit before we come in to rest. And lift your tailbones up away from the ground into a bridge pose. If your energy level is low at this point, you can slide a block underneath your sacrum for a supported bridge. But if you still feel like you have a lot of energy to burn, and of course, you can stay in a uh, active bridge and can also come into a wheel pose with or without the block in between the thigh bones. Your chest are perfectly open for a deep back bend like this and your body is warmed up. So it all comes down to your judgment of your energy level tonight. Even if you judge that you can come into a wheel pose, are you capable of still staying close to your breath in your wheel pose? If not, that's your sign to come back down. From wheel or bridge pose, we all come down to the ground, hug the knees into the chest neutralize our spine from the back bend and rock back and forward side to side and release both knees to the left side extend the right arm out to the right side and gaze over the right shoulder all the way to the right fingertips too far away use your left hand left arm to pull the right knee close to the left close to the ground. If your left knees are still far away from the ground, slide a block underneath them to make it a little bit more supportive. And just let this last a couple of shapes be an opportunity. to introduce yourself into a longer moment of quietness, peacefulness. And come back to center. And release your knees to the right side. Bring your right hand on top of your left thigh. Extend your left arm out. Gaze over the left shoulder, all the way through the left fingertips. Be soft. Close the eyes. And once you're ready, bring the chest back to center.
And if there's any other shapes you like to incur in your practice tonight, please go for it. But think about it, if it's something that is more challenging, see if you can actually think about why there's an urge for you to take that shape rather than something more restive, more, new, more nurturing. And if you're ready for your rest, extend your legs long, bring the hands by the side. Because it's still in the spring and it's still a little bit cold, so I always suggest that bring a blanket or couch pillow on top of your pelvis, make it warm and grounding. You also have an option to bring something underneath your palms to release some tension from the shoulders. And it's also nice to separate your palms away from the cold knees of the floor. Once you're ready, Shavasana. You're welcome to stay where you are. If you're ready to come out of your Shavasana, start wiggling your toes and fingertips. And gently sway your neck side to side. And bend one leg another and roll onto one side of yours. Then use your hands to support yourself. Come all the way up into a comfortable seat with palms facing down, resting on the knees or on the thighs or somewhere that's not distracting for you.
Keep staying close to your breath. And if it's just the resonate gesture for you, gather your hand in front of the heart, but keep one long breath in all together. And then exhale, let everything out. And bow your head toward the heart. Whenever you're ready, slowly blink open the eyes. Thank you so much for practicing with me tonight and I look forward to seeing you again next week.